Tonight, Disney scoops up Maker, Google Now comes to the desktop, and Apple's future of content includes Comcast pipes. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 50 for Monday, March 24th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to 50 job boards, even more than that, with just one click. Try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Well, Disney has officially acquired YouTube network Maker Studios for $500 million, plus a potential $450 million in performance-based earnouts. The acquisition is the largest one of a YouTube multi-channel network to date. Maker was founded by a team of YouTube creators and now represents thousands of creators who together have 5.5 billion video views per month. Maker has raised over $66 million over three rounds of funding and even acquired content platform Blip last summer. Now the question is, what does a post-YouTube distribution model look like for Disney? Google Now has arrived for Windows and Mac and will roll out to users over the next few weeks, so Google Now notifications will be available to desktop and laptop Chrome users, along with Android and iOS users. Cards will only be visible on your computer if you use Google Now on your mobile device and if you're signed into Chrome, and are a subset of Google Now's mobile cards, weather, sports scores, commuter traffic, and event reminders. Some cards may be based on the location of your mobile device. Others will work location independently. The code has been in the beta channel since February and is finally official. Well, iTunes Radio has added its first news station to its streaming radio service, National Public Radio, which offers a free stream 24 hours a day and mixes live news with segments from pre-recorded shows. NPR officials say that within weeks, some of the broadcaster's local stations will start offering their own stations and programs as well. NPR has been available via the web and mobile apps for some time and attracts 30 million visitors per month. iTunes Radio is a Pandora competitor built to boost album sales, although online download sales in general declined worldwide for the first time last year. Apple pays music owners whenever it streams their songs on iTunes Radio, but its business relationship with NPR, which is a non-profit organization, is unclear. In other Apple news, the company is in talks with Comcast to develop a streaming television service using an Apple set-top box and priority bandwidth access on Comcast's cables. That's according to anonymous sources talking to the Wall Street Journal. The deal, if it goes through, would set a new level of partnership between a technology company and a cable provider and would allow users to stream live, on-demand TV programming and digital video recordings stored in the cloud and replace a traditional cable set-top box. Microsoft is warning users of a remote code execution vulnerability in its Word application that's being actively exploited in targeted attacks directed at Microsoft Word 2010, but also affects Word 2003, 2007, and 2013 Microsoft Word Viewer and Microsoft Office for Mac 2011. The company explained that the vulnerability could allow remote code execution if a user opens a special RTF file using an affected version of Word or pre reviews or opens a specially crafted RTF email message in Outlook while using Word as the email viewer. Now, if successfully exploited, an attacker could then gain the same user rights as the current user. Until the bug is patched, Microsoft is providing a fix-it automated tool to provide opening of RTF files in all, to prevent, rather, opening of RTF files in all Word versions. It's IPO time. Cloud storage company Box has filed, and S1 is looking to raise up to $250 million in the run-up to its initial public offering. For the full year period that ended in January, Box's revenues grew to $124 million, up from $58.8 million the year prior, but... The company also posted losses of $168 million for a full-year period that ended in January, which is more than its total top line for the period. So an IPO could certainly drum up enough money to put a much larger cushion around its burn rate. Coming up, it's like a Roomba for your yard. The future of gardening is full of robots. And in a moment, we'll get a roundup on this year's GDC with VentureBeats' Dean Takahashi. 
But first, are you hiring? Yeah, let's hope so. Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? There are a lot of job boards out there. Which one is going to give you the best talent? If you want to fill a position fast with the right candidate, you need to post your job on all of those top job sites so the right people can see the job. With ZipRecruiter.com, you post to 50 plus job sites all at once with a single click. ZipRecruiter will also post your job on social networks, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Google+. They'll add your company logo and colors to make your job pages an extension of your business, and you can add unlimited users to your account. You can create an instant job page on your website. You can include a company careers page to use as a careers link. The possibilities are endless. Post once and watch the qualified candidates roll right into ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface. ZipRecruiter.com will automatically highlight the best candidates, then you scream them, you rate them, and then you hire the right person for you. Try ZipRecruiter and find out why they've been used by over 100,000 businesses. Right now, viewers and listeners of TN2 can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. At ZipRecruiter.com slash TN and the number two. And we thank ZipRecruiter for the support of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining us now is Dean Takahashi, lead writer for Games Beat over at Venture Beat. How are you, Dean? Uh, good. So nice to be back, sir. we were talking before the show that you spent quite a bit of time at Moscone Center last week covering the Game, uh, game, uh, game Developers Conference GDC 2014. Are you tired? Mm -hmm. I am tired. Uh, yeah, it's uh, still lingering. Uh, I spent about 70 hours over there, and I was one of about 24,000 people that attended the, the GDC at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. And that's a record number of attendings, right? Uh, that's up 9% from last year. So who are all these newcomers? Well, they've done the surveys, and about half of the people are indie game developers, uh, sort of like the guy who made uh, Flappy Bird, the uh, lone inventor, uh, uh, sort of toiling away in Hanoi, Vietnam. Uh, even he came to the show uh, this time. And uh, you also have a lot of people coming from other territories that uh, never came before. Uh, there was a company called Fun Plus uh, from China. Uh, they have about 400 people. In the middle of the show, they announced that they had raised $74 million. Uh, so that's a lot of change, and uh, it uh, gives them a lot of travel money. I have to imagine the creator of Flappy Bird must have generated quite a bit of interest. Uh, everybody wants to get a good look at the, the guy who, who had the viral <laughs> game hit of the year. Do you think that there's a trend towards those sorts of one-hit wonders? It does, <laughs> for, for a small indie uh, developer, is that, is, is that, the, is that the trend? Is that what, what people are, are looking for going forward? <laughs> Well, that, that's still like the fairy tale dream that every developer has that, uh, you know, they're going to launch something, it's going to go viral, and uh, they're going to have a, a big hit on their hands. Uh, 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 this game was generating something like fifty thousand dollars a day for for this guy, and if it uh, continues to do that for the whole year, that's eighteen million bucks in his pocket. Um, and most developers do not see this happen. Um, there's something like uh, one point two million apps out on the App Store now, and uh, many of them just go unnoticed. Uh, and everybody still thinks that uh, that. Everything is wide open. Uh, but there are about three games like Clash of Clans, um, Puzzle and Dragons, and Candy Crush Sega that have uh, commanded the top positions in the App Store for the past year or so. And they have about 25% of the whole market now. And um, they can actually afford to out-advertise anybody. So it's getting harder and harder for these small indie uh, developers to compete because they just can't, they can't advertise their, their games the way that they, the big guys do now. What about some of the virtual reality news coming out of GDC? We've got Sony's uh, headset called Project Morpheus, Oculus VR's release of a better performing virtual reality development kit. What caught your eye? So the, I, I think the great thing about these systems are uh, that they are promising that they will not make you sick. So you are not going to throw up while you're, that's, you're uh, engaged that's in virtual reality. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sony showed off, uh, you know, some unique... Uh, sort of uh, virtual reality experiences like uh, they, they lower you into the ocean in a shark cage and then uh, a shark can come at you from any direction. Um, I also saw a, a company called Servios. They, they had a nice demo of a, a zombie game where you could be attacked from 360 degrees and uh, one of the ways that you could fight was uh, just by pointing your guns in any direction or sideways even like in a like a John Woo movie or so. Uh, so uh, 
So these are things that you can't really do in a uh, in a video game today, where you're you're sort of looking directly at the screen and just playing with one control. Looking forward to the next year of gaming, you had written uh, in your write up of GDC that the conference covered perhaps more than ever social ad advocacy issues, representation mm -hmm. of race and gender, sexuality in games. Do you think that that was a, a marked effort on the conference to make sure that people are having larger conversations about what games mean and how they affect us? Yeah, I think uh, finally people, uh, the game developers themselves, are starting to realize that uh, you know they've they've got a lot of power in their hands. They can make a pr an impression on a lot of people out there, and so uh, they they don't have to continue reinforcing stereotypes. Uh, you know, either sexist ones or racist ones. Uh, they can uh, create uh, more realism in their characters. Um, you're seeing things like uh, you know young fourteen year old girls uh, being the main character of games games like uh, The Last of Us, uh, and, uh, and that was like game of the year. Uh, so uh, they, they're starting to ask these questions uh, that nobody had asked before, like why do the women always have to have uh, such large breasts in the games, or why do the, the guys uh, who are the heroes of always have to be white guys? Uh, why can't we have uh, some more variety in these games? And uh, because they're asking the questions, uh, they're making an impression, and the developers uh, are responding with a wider variety of, of characters and games. Last question for me. The conference is bigger than ever. A uh, record number of attendees. It was up almost 10% from last year. Mm -hmm. Did that mm -hmm. seem like a good thing to you? Did it, it, overall, does it seem like the interest is going in the right direction? Well, the, 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 a lot of people are saying that the game industry is, has hit a golden age right now. And the reason they think that is because all parts of the industry are starting to grow. There's a traditional PC that has sort of been invigorated by free-to-play uh, online games. Uh, there's the consoles that have been uh, pumped up by two uh, brand new uh, consoles. And then mobile and social are also uh, doing pretty well. And so th th there are parts of the industry that weren't there before. Uh, they're all sort of hitting on, uh, uh, you know, they're all really doing well. Uh, so I, I think that's why uh, you have the attendance up at, at GDC and a little more optimism about the industry this year. Well, Dean, thanks for spending so much time at GDC uh, so that we didn't have to and letting us know a little <laughs> bit more about uh, what we can look forward to over the next year. All right. Thank you, sir. Dean Takahashi, he is the lead writer for Games Beat at Venture Beat. Tell folks uh, where they can follow more of your work online. Uh, VentureBeat.com. All right. Thanks so much for being here. All right. Thank you. Finally, you ever wish your garden sprinkler was a lot smarter? Yeah, why not? This droplet is a robotic watering system built to aim at specific plants rather than overwatering your entire yard. So it hooks up to your garden hose and then aims a stream of water at each specific plant and knows where to water, how much to water, and what pattern to water through a configuration option accessed via a tablet, smartphone, or computer. Droplet is currently available for pre-order on Amazon for $300. And say hello to your new garden overlords. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv with questions, comments, and feedback. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.